All right, let's get started. Good morning and welcome to today's Tuesday Markets Outlook session. My name is Prakash Vijay and I'm a senior analyst here at Options Play. And today I am going to be walking you through how I am viewing the current markets. So before we get started, just a quick disclaimer. The types of security forms and research tools used in this video are for demonstration purposes only and should not be considered a recommendation by Options Play or a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities. This video is not intended to be used for individual tax, legal, or investment planning advice. Our agenda for today, as usual, kicking off with the major equity indices, highlighting some key areas of support and resistance, and taking a look at the more recent price action, which has been quite interesting as of late across the board. From there, we'll be moving on to fixed income and commod uh, commodities, We'll take a look at the sector rotational model, highlighting which sectors are outperforming and which sectors are underperforming the overall market. We'll move on to some subsectors of interest that I have for you today, and we'll end today's session with some bullish and bearish market observations. So before we take a look at the major equity indices, we'll be taking a look at the Fed interest rate hiking probabilities for the next meeting, which is on the 22nd of March, so around five weeks away. And currently, you know, the target rate is 450 to 475. We did see a 25 point hike. Um, sorry, we did see a 25 point hike um, last week, which is largely priced in. You know, we knew we we're going to be getting 25 point hikes moving forward. And we have a fairly rough estimation of where interest rates are heading. Um, eventually, they will be most likely um, going to peak at around between 500 and 525 or maybe 550. So, we're near the end of this interest rate hiking phase, um, and we are getting there with 25 point hike increments. And the 22nd of March, it looks like Fed futures are pricing in pretty much the same thing and pretty much 100% probability of another 25 point hike. So, you know, when you, when you consider the fact that last week was a huge week for equities, I mean, in the beginning or on Wednesday, we had the first big move, market moving event, which was um, the interest rate hike and, of course, the forward guidance from the Fed. And mark, all eyes were on the forward guidance from the Fed. We knew where interest rates were heading, but we wanted to know. And the big question is how long will interest rates remain elevated? Um, and that's what's going to be moving markets. So forward guidance was, I would say, a little bit on the dovish side, which saw equities actually rally on Wednesday. And then we had Thursday's earnings report from the big tech names, um, which was, again, another big market mover, but to the downside, because a lot of the names, I mean, a lot of the earnings reports were announced after the close. And we saw, you know, the, um, some of these names like Apple missing out on iPhone sales. And um, those earnings reports did not come in as good as expected. They came in below analyst, analyst expectations. And then, of course, Friday, we had a pretty critical jobs report number come out. Um, and if you were to ask me last week, early last week, to rank these three events in terms of the order of how much they'll move markets, I would have put the jobs report last. Um, reason being, you know, yes, we tend to see volatility on jobs report day, but that volatility only usually lasts for the day or so. It only really dictates price action for a day or two. Whereas this jobs report came out a lot hotter than expected. Um, analyst expectation for non-farm payrolls was a 188,000 increase, and the number actually came out at just above 500,000. So almost three times higher than analyst expectations. So there was a huge discrepancy there, and we are now seeing equities pull back because of that. Because yes, you know, during normal conditions, you would think um, the economy adding more jobs is a positive for uh, equities. However, that is not the case in a in a high inflationary period uh, when the Fed actually wants to see um, the labor market cool down, and we are not getting that evidence. That being said, uh, despite the high number, the markets are still predicting a 25 point hike move. So it hasn't really affected uh, what the Fed will do in terms of the next meeting, but it does raise the question of how long the Fed will want to keep interest rates because. Um, or how, how long they want to keep interest rates elevated uh, because a hot labor market, that is a huge driver of inflation and sustained inflation. So let's see what happens uh, over, the, over the next few months with regards to labor, labor data. But for now, you know, that is definitely a headwind for equities. 
So taking a look here at the S&P 500 and focusing on the weekly time frame and just taking it back a few uh, few months, uh, we had the pandemic lows at around 220. And this is a Fibonacci chart from pandemic lows all the way to all-time highs at 480. And as you can see, price has been somewhat respecting these levels. We had the 23.6 Fib level at 420 or so, acting as support and also resistance. We have the 38.2 Fib level at 380, acting as a major area of support. And of course, the market bottom from last year at the 50% Fib level at 350. And you know, the, when we were looking at the market bottom or heading in towards the market bottom last year, it was fairly easy to to realize the market bottom was happening soon. Uh, bear markets tend to usually last six months, and we're approaching that time frame. Not to mention, we were seeing some positive divergence with momentum increasing despite price decreasing, which is a huge bullish indicator. And naturally, we had the market bottom, and we are seeing a bit of a uh, inverse head and shoulders here, right? We have the left shoulder, right shoulder, I mean, um, head and the right shoulder at the 380 level, which is a 38.6 FIB level. So we did see price pull back in December, form that right shoulder, and January has been a very good month for equities. It started off with a, with a very risk on sentiment, and equities continue to move higher, not yet breaking a bearish structure, but definitely looking like it will very soon especially after a few months of capitulation. So 23.6 sub level at 420, clearly once again acting as resistance. And if we look at the daily time frame, you know, I would reckon daily resistance between 410 to 420 is what you want to look at. Price has rallied there with a lot of momentum. However, that momentum did reach an overbought condition on the daily um, 50 period CCI that I use to measure momentum. And since then, we, ha we have naturally seen a bit of a reversal Price was set to open uh, same way, near, near where it closed last night or last evening. And you know, yes, there is more room for a decline, in my opinion. Um, and I think prices do need to decline a little bit more, especially after that jobs data that came out. Um, I think January just started off maybe too risk on, in my opinion. We still have recessionary fears <clears throat> that we need to navigate through, which is going to be a major tailwind. And there is still some uncertainty as to how um, long interest rates will remain elevated. Word on the street is November will be when they start cutting interest rates, but that jobs data on Friday definitely throws a spanner in the works. That being said, this pullback that we are seeing, I think it comes in a very timely manner, especially when you look at the technicals where we did reach an overboard condition. Big question now is where, how far could this pullback actually come down to? Because we do have minor resistance where price is currently at, but no bullish price action just yet. We have the 21 and 55 day exponential moving averages that could act as support. And we also have the 400 level, which has quite recently acted as a very minor area of resistance and support as well, and also a strong psychological level. So that those would be where, those would be the areas that I'll be looking for pullback before continuation of this reversal higher for the S&P 500. Okay, moving on to the NASDAQ 100, looking at the QQQ ETF and same price action, you know, price did reach an overbought condition, even a little bit more overbought than the S&P. And that has to do with the fact that um, the NASDAQ 100 is largely comprised of um, growth names and technology names, which are a lot more exposed to changes of interest rate or perceived interest rate policies. Um, and the fact that we got a bit more dovish last week, early earlier last week, um, saw some outperformance here for the NASDAQ. But again, we are seeing a bit of a pullback um, after this breakout above 300, strong psychological level. So pullback to 300 um, could see a retest before move higher, or we could have a bit of a steeper pullback down to 290, which would be the level that I'll be lo looking at for um, additional support. But overall, you know, I still remain somewhat bullish here for equities or neutral to bullish. Um, with a rising interest rate environment or in a high interest rate environment, we can't expect the same level or the same velocity of this recovery in equities that we saw during the pandemic, um, after the pandemic drop, because that's where interest rates got completely slashed, right? So that facilitates um, a, a big move in a very short period of time for equities, whereas we don't have those same conditions currently. Um, so I do I do expect you know equities to continue to grind higher, especially after this bear market had did price in the potential for a recession um, and did price in 
um, high inflation and high interest rates. Uh, we're definitely past the worst of it, in my opinion, even if we do get a bit of a recession. But from a timing perspective, we do need to see that pullback, especially when price has approached an overbought condition. The next key level would be at around 316 to 320. As you can see on the weekly time frame, it has acted as support um, and a bit of resistance as well. And from there, you have 360s and 400s. Taking a look at IWM, which is the Russell 2000 ETF. So this measures small caps. And small caps have definitely been gaining my attention lately. Um, I am seeing some outperformance from small caps relative to large caps. So we'll be taking a look at that in the next slide. But looking at the price action here for IWM, you know, uh, this is a chart we've looked at quite a lot where price has been respecting its fib levels like the S&P uh, 23.6 acting as resistance, 38.2 acting as a very strong area of support and resistance. Um, and we had the 50% fib level, not as much support because price did breach below that to 163 where it formed a double bottom. But we are still seeing that capitulation here um, with a um, higher low quite recently and now a breakout above that 38.2 fib level. And if you look at the daily time frame, yeah, not only was it a breakout, but it was a breakout with a strong, strong momentum all the way to just shy of 200. And now we are seeing a bit of a pullback. And again, I welcome this pullback because I am looking at small caps and looking at getting into long positions within small caps or within this ETF, I should say. And you want to see a pullback from an overbought condition here again for the Russell 2000. Ideally, the pullback could potentially head down to 188. Uh, where, which was a previous area of resistance and which could also turn to support. So that's where I see small caps heading for now. Um, and then if we do get a bounce from that 188, 38.2 uh, FIB level, we could we could be in store for a revisit of 210, which is a 23.6 FIB level. So looking at very much focused on the FIB levels here for um, small caps. Sorry, here we go. Okay, so taking a look at this relative performance ch chart between small caps versus large caps. So this is a ratio chart. Um, you don't need to worry about the numbers on the right-hand side, but what, what you do want to see is the price action and the breakouts or breakdowns. So going back a couple of years, early 2020, we had a lot of our performance for small caps, early bull markets, right? And then we had a bear market where... Um, no, no, so we did, in 2021, we didn't get a bear market, but what we did see was um, a lot of neutral price action for small caps, very much stuck within that range, um, just above the 23.6 FIB level that we saw in the last graph for one entire year. And this was during a time when large caps were outperforming. Large caps were making new higher highs in the market. And that is why we are now seeing that relative um, performance start to decline all the way back down to um, that uh, pandemic level. And now over 2022, what we saw was a bit of consolidation because we saw a bear market in, in large caps as well as small caps. And we saw this ratio chart essentially remain quite neutral. But what we are seeing now is that potential for a breakout. We have an ascending trend line here. Um, so buying pressure. And we are seeing a breakout above this resistance area here for small caps, despite yesterday's uh, price action. So that is a positive, in my opinion, for small caps. The fact that they are now back in the picture after essentially two years of being out of the picture. So uh, I am. we will be looking at small caps a bit more, in, or at least the ETF as a whole, a bit more moving forward. Okay, taking a look here at TLT, which is the treasury, 20, 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. And bonds have been under a bit of pressure despite the recent recovery. So overall, looking at the price action, strong bearish trend, bearish structure remains resilient, especially when you look at the more recent price action. After price formed at a bottom just above 90 or 92.50, we saw recovery in bonds and uh, price did run into resistance at around 108, which is a previous uh, swing level here um, before the bottom. It was a previous swing low. And we, saw, we can see now multiple rejections of that 108, 109 level, especially if you look at the daily time frame. Price is really struggling to get back above that 108 level. And this provides a good trading opportunity for TLT, in my opinion. I, ideally, you'd want to use a trade structure like a credit spread um, that takes advantage of the neutral to slightly bearish um, price action. 
Because even though, yes, price is running into resistance at around 108 to 109, we're not seeing a strong move lower. I don't think we're going to be seeing a revisit of 92.50. I think price will be remaining neutral until, until we get news about interest rate cuts um, or more clear news about when we're going to be implementing interest rate cuts. But for now, you know, TLT under pressure, I do think the bottom has been formed, but the bearish structure still remains intact. Okay, taking a look at the dollar using DXY. And the dollar has finally found some support. I mean, for the last couple of months, I highlighted this area between 102 and 100 as support. Um, and we've slowly been grinding lower towards that price level. And now we are seeing, even in the last three days with the price action, look at that momentum that has been generated at around 101. So 102 to 100, strong area of support. Um, and we are seeing price approach that 55-day exponential moving average. That being said, bearish structure still remains intact. You could even draw a trend line like that. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's a very strong trend line, but you need more confirmation for a, for capitulation of the dollar, in my opinion. Uh, but we are seeing dollar strength returning, especially from last week, where yes, we got some dovish news initially, but the fundamentals didn't, and the other fundamentals and the other news events didn't quite align with that. So let's see if the dollar can break above this trend line. But for now, we are seeing a slight resurgence here in the dollar after finding support and after recovering from, you know, very elevated levels, which had reached in a very short space of time. And taking a look at gold. So finally, finally, we have seen a pullback in gold. You know, gold, it's, it's, it's been a name where we've wanted to get long for a couple of months now, especially with due to, due to the fact that, one, the dollar was decreasing and gold moves inversely with the dollar, but also due to um, uh, recession fears as well, and gold is a safe haven. And, you know, I think a lot of people had that same idea, which is why we saw so much momentum for gold. And there were very limited pullbacks. You know, in retrospect, yes, it's, it's very easy to say, oh, you could have gotten at that pullback to 162. But at the time, you know, we were looking at a deep, we wanted deeper pullbacks to 160 or so. So we've got very limited pullbacks, a lot of momentum, and gold did approach overbought conditions, you know, uh, quite quickly. And then we got to 180s, and now we are seeing some um, some reversals here for price, especially with the dollar resurging as well. Now, with gold, I am still, I do still have a bullish thesis for gold, but from a timing perspective, not just, not right yet. You know, I want to see a further pullback. I want to see more bullish price action. If we see bullish price action at current levels, I think that would be a nice time to go, go long in gold um, or use a credit spread for more neutral to bullish position. But, you know, a steeper pullback is still welcome here for gold. I do expect gold prices to remain elevated. Um, next key areas of support below 171 would be at 167. So those would be the downside targets that I see for gold. But where price currently is, if we see bullish price action, it's still a valid bullish entry point and a good risk to reward bullish entry point for gold, in my opinion. Okay, moving on to oil, looking at light crude oil futures, and fairly fairly boring, in my opinion. I mean, range bound, right? We've seen range bound price action for the last few months between 81 and 70. And um, price quite recently, again, retested that 81 level a lot of bearish price action there and heading lower, but now showing some bullish price action. So still within this range, when you look at the fundamentals for oil, um, on the demand side, you have um, the Chinese reopening, which should drive price higher. But then again, you have recession fears that drives price lower. So right now that equilibrium is between 81 and 70. And that's what we're seeing. Overall though, oil is still on a bearish trend on the weekly time frame. Followed, followed by some a slight retracement higher, as you can see, um, with this range bound market, but it still does leave it susceptible to a continuation lower to 61, which will be the next area of major support. We still expect oil prices to remain somewhat elevated. Uh, that being said, on the daily time frame, you know, it's still range bound for now. So we'd want to, we'd want to wait for a break below that $70 level for continuation lower. And we've seen that um, due to oil prices declining and not really finding a lot of momentum or remaining range bound, one of the 
biggest sectors in the sector rotation chart. One of the biggest sectors for 2022 that was providing a lot of leadership for pretty much the whole year was energy. Energy highly exposed to oil prices. And with oil prices rising, we saw energy remain in this leading category for the majority of the year. Now we are seeing a steady rotation out of energy. Naturally so, especially during a time where oil prices are declining and the rest of the sectors or the rest of the market is moving higher. So relative performance for energy has been quite poor and we are seeing that rotation out of it into the weakening category. If we look at our defensive sectors and staples, healthcare and utilities, we have seen some rotation out of these sectors in recent weeks. However, for February, as we approach you know, the early parts of February and even maybe March, I do expect a more risk off sentiment. We started the year with a risk on sentiment. Naturally, defenses are going to see rotation out of them, which we have seen in this chart. Now, I do expect more of a risk off sentiment, um, especially after equities have now rallied to overbought conditions. So even though we are seeing uh, you know, relative performance decline, I expect these sectors, these defensive sectors and utilities, staples and healthcare to improve. Financials and industrials rotating out of leading, so is materials. Despite it being in the leading category, I think it's only a matter of time to see a rotation out of it. Um, discretionary in the lagging category and showing some good momentum or relative momentum. That being said, high interest rates means lower consumer spending. Lower consumer spending negatively impacts discretionary the most. Um, it's, the, it's the sector that's high, most... Um, vulnerable to lower consumer spending and for that reason even though we had a good earnings season for discretionary which is seeing this initial pop-up higher in performance i still expect discretionary to um underperform the broader market for the year i don't think the economic conditions are correct for discretion for discretionary outperformance so um still expecting weakness there despite the recent performance now, looking at the improving category, communications performing very well, especially with uh, Meta posting, you know, some very or posting some very good forward guidance. I should say, um, more focus now on cutting down costs, and Meta makes a huge part of a communication sector. So we are, I do expect communications to continue to perform very well. Real estate as well, good recovery from last year, and technology minimal rotation. And this is a sector that has the most. Um, impact in the broader market in the S&P and in the NASDAQ and right now we're seeing very minimal involvement and participation from technology so um, yes it's in the improving category but it's not showing a lot of momentum so it could easily drop down into the lagging category and just rotate between these two um, categories for a few months okay, taking a look at uh, some subsectors of interest we have KWEB uh, K, uh, Chinese Internet ETF, a name we've looked at for a couple of months. I'm, it's still on my radar. I'm still looking at getting into tactical bullish positions. And right now, where prices provides a good bullish entry point. So we've seen a lot of momentum on the daily time frame, limited pullbacks or and limited consolidation levels, but those provide a good bullish entry points. And quite recently, we saw some more consolidation below 36. And price actually broke below a minor resistance level, just below 34 but found further support at a previous resistance at 32. So we saw bullish price action yesterday, set to open higher this morning. That provides a good risk reward bullish entry point for continuation higher back to 36 and potentially back to my more my, my main profit target, which is at around 39.50 or 40. That will be um, my, my upside target here for KWEB. But this is a name that has been providing some good results and some nice bullish entry points for us during the last two months. Another name that I'm looking at, um, I know I spoke about this last week, is biotechnology. And biotechnology, initially, I was bearish at 133, and we saw that bearish price action there. Um, but that was immediately invalidated after a engulfing candle and a continuation higher. So even though 133 or 134 has acted as a major resistance level on the weekly time frame, more recently, it's really been more about 138. It's been a 138 level that has been providing a lot more resistance. And if you look at the last two days of price action, one intraday rejection and a second intraday rejection. So 138 clearly providing a strong area of resistance, and this provides a nice risk to reward bearish entry point for continuation lower, which I still think will be limited to 130. I don't expect biotechnology to reverse all the way lower to 122 or anything like that. But um 
I do think the fact that biotechnology is not struggling at this level, especially when health, we've seen rotation out of healthcare, um, I am looking for a more tact, tactical bearish position here. And it will be short term. And I would most likely look for a credit spread opportunity because it's not like we're seeing a strong move lower. It's more of a grind lower and very choppy price action. But 138 will be that bearish thesis. Okay, moving on to some market observations, we have NVIDIA, um, still an, another name from last week, and NVIDIA performing very well. Despite the pullback in markets over the last few days, NVIDIA has only seen a very limited pullback, set to open higher this morning. And with what we've seen here on the weekly time frame is really a breakout, a breakout above this capitulation where we saw, I would say, an inverted head and shoulders, 190 neckline, and very strong momentum to see price break above that. Um, we saw a very quick retest on the daily and a move higher. Now, I don't expect price to really come back to 190. So I'm still, I would say, you know, from a timing perspective, don't expect huge pullbacks. But from a longer term perspective, I think NVIDIA is a great stock to have to, and it's a great stock to own. Um, you know, even before ChatGPT became a thing, NVIDIA had very good fundamentals, was gaining market share in the semiconductor space, was focusing on the higher end products, which commanded higher margin. Its data center, um, its data center segment posted, I think, 33% growth last quarter. So it's well diversified and it's very much touching base on these thematic themes, or I don't want to say futuristic themes because they were futuristic three, four years ago not so futuristic now, we're getting AI chatbots, we're getting five, more 5G, we're getting EVs. And, you know, NVIDIA, what exposed to all of these sectors, all of these high growth themes. Um, and for that reason, you know, I, I am very much, yeah, NVIDIA is one of my favorite stocks currently. And this breakout from on the weekly time frame provides a nice uh, risk to reward bullish opportunity, long-term bullish opportunity. However, if you're looking for a short-term bullish opportunity, I'd say wait for a bit more for pullback. Um, prices is in an overbought condition so that's for short term but for long term you know it doesn't really matter if price pulls back um i think it has very good fundamentals and now finally the technicals are lining up with that moving on to general motors so general motors is a bearish pick for me and the thesis behind this is quite simple it's more of a technical trade with 41 42 acting as resistance now price is once again at that area we have seen multiple rejections of 42 in recent days. And from a risk reward perspective, a very good bearish entry point for that move lower, especially with price not yet reaching overbought, but quite close to an overbought condition. Um, for this to become invalidated, all price has to do is break above 42 and close above 42. So uh, that'll be a very, very limited loss, but we have quite a bit to gain here with 37 acting as downside support and a take profit zone. And we have finally JP Morgan again. So JP Morgan, again, like like uh, KWEB, where it's provided some good bullish opportunities along the last couple of months. Limited pullbacks. Uh, we saw an initial breakout of 127, pullback to 127 and a move higher. Now we're seeing a pullback to the 21-day exponential moving average at 135 and a move higher. And it's continuing to move higher. But it may not look very bullish over the last few days, but take a look at that relative performance, not only against the overall market, but its competitors, it's the other major banks. Compare its performance to Citigroup, to Goldman Sachs, to Morgan Stanley, it has been performing very, very well. So, and even compared to the overall market in the last few days where price has declined, JP Morgan has continued to move higher. So I'm, I, this is more of a um, relative performance play and not a very long-term opportunity, but I do see, you know, continuation higher until 146. From there, it should run into some resistance, um, which was a previous area of support at 146. But we could also see a breakout with 158 being the um, next target price. So with that, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so, so much for joining me. And I hope you all can join me tomorrow for the wheel strategy. We are be taking a deeper dive into that strategy um, as part of the first trade education series and from there next week for another markets outlook. I hope you all have a great tra trading week ahead and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.